Hey artists, in this video I'm going to show you how to photograph two-dimensional artwork. Now there's a whole bunch of ways to do it. We're going to start with the fancy way, which is what you can do while you're in class, and then we'll talk more about ways you can take good photographs at home of your artwork. So I've got one of my sketchbook drawings here, and if you come a little closer, you'll notice that you can see through the paper. That's no good. We don't want to see that when we're taking a photo, so I'm going to take this piece of copy paper, just blank paper, you can take it just another sheet out of your sketchbook, and we're just going to slide it right in there and cover it up. So now we can't see through the paper, which is pretty awesome. So let's take this over to our photographing area. It's pretty fancy, right? So you'll notice we've got some extra lights here, and these are nice lights because they don't have any sort of color to them. It's just straight white daylight light. It's not yellow, it's not blue, it's right in the middle, which is what we want. So I'm going to take my iPad, I'm going to set up my drawing on the easel here, and I think I need to push the easel back just a little bit so that the light is hitting it a little bit better. So you want to step back and look at it, make sure it's evenly lit and that there aren't any shadows on it because shadows are going to make your artwork look a little funky. So that looks pretty good to me. If I had the light on it too harshly, my graphite would look pretty shiny and that wouldn't be something I'd want in my photo. So it's at a good spot. I might move it just a tish. That looks good to me. Okay, so now I'm going to start with my iPad. Um, first, I'm going to see the HDR option here. That means high dynamic range, which means you're going to get a little more contrast on your photo, which is pretty fancy. I'm going to take my iPad and line it up as much as possible with my image. It's okay if there's a little bit extra showing at this point, but we need to make sure it's clear and crisp and in the frame, zoomed in as close as we can get. We can crop it in just a minute. And then I will take my photo. I'm going to check my photo. Does it look good? I think I shook a little bit, so I'm gonna try it again. Some helpful tips to avoid shaking. Brace your elbows into your hips. Hold your iPad closer to you and hold your breath when you take the photo. I think that does it. Oh, much better. Okay. So now we're in the editing stage. So I'm going to click edit. And all I really need to do is crop my image. So I need to straighten it a little bit. Okay. And then I'm going to crop in. Apparently my straightening was not that great. Let's realign, there we go. And I'm going to crop out all of that extra information in the photo. Much better. Now, what I need to do is edit it so that it looks as close to the original as possible. So I'm going to compare what I'm seeing in real life with what I'm seeing in my image. And I'm going to click the editing options over here Auto does not always work, so I wouldn't suggest it. I'll click it, we'll see what happens. Eh, it's okay. So maybe I will unclick that. And what I'm going to do is go to exposure. That's gonna make it lighter or darker. I'm going to up that just a little bit to get those whites where we want it. Brilliance, we could do the same. I don't want to go too far with the lights because it'll make the hair appear too shiny and we don't really want that. We want to up the shadows just a little bit to get that contrast back. And the contrast. Ooh, very nice. Now that is looking really close to the actual image. finish with black point. Black always brings everything kind of back where we found it. So once I feel good about my image, um, if it's color, you could play with vibrance and saturation. 
Um, warmth would be like maybe if your light is really yellow, you could play with the warmth to make it cooler. Or if your light is really blue, you could play with it to go warmer. And that will kind of neutralize your light just a little bit, which is pretty helpful. But I feel pretty good about this, so I'm going to hit done. So this is the fancy way of doing it at school. So maybe you're at home and you don't have fancy can lights and an easel to work with. You could still take a good picture. So let's head over here. We'll pretend we're in a regular room. First of all, you want to find a spot where the lighting is good. So nice bright lighting. Your bedroom might not be the best option unless if you have some like desk lamps you can prop up. But in this case, we've got fluorescent lights. So maybe a kitchen might have fluorescent lights. That might be a good place for you to start. So we'll just prop our artwork up. You could even tape it to a wall if you need it to. Um, but since this is in my sketchbook, I can just prop it up. Um, so from here, I need to make sure that I'm not casting any shadows when I am working. So it looks pretty good from here. And we're going to do the same process of photographing. So we just want to line up our iPad, make sure it's even as much as possible. And once it's as even as we can get, we might need to tilt it a little bit to get the right angle. Let's try and find that angle. And then we will take our photo. So from here, we're going to go through all the same steps of cropping and adjusting to get our light just right. I think I got this at a good angle, so I feel pretty good about it. But for example, if maybe your angle isn't quite how you wanted it and you need to tilt it, you can, whoopsie, that isn't what I meant to do. <laughs> I apparently got a little excited. Let's try that again. So maybe your image isn't quite perfectly angled right. We could click this area right here to adjust the tilt of the image. You don't want to rely on that because it can distort your image a little bit, but it's helpful. So we can adjust that and then go back in and crop it as usual. So maybe you don't have very good lighting at home anywhere in your house. That's okay. You could go outside. So outside, especially on a day like today when it's overcast, is <laughs> it's even better because you don't have that hard sunlight beating down and casting shadows or washing out your image. So a day like today is perfect. If it is sunny, you can still go outside, but you're just going to want to find a shaded area to take your photo. So I've just set up my sketchbook on this window ledge. Obviously, you can set it on the ground or you could tape it to a wall. Those are options. Um, you could even lay it flat on the ground and shoot from above. As long as you aren't casting a shadow, it works. So we're going to do the same thing we've done always and line up our sketchbook and take a photo. Easy peasy. So those are some really helpful ways that you can take a photo at school or at home of your two-dimensional artwork.